Hey Puppy Trades, wanted to do a quick video update of what I believe are the three most important long-term investments for me personally. Just for me personally, I believe that what I'm about to go over in this video are the three most important long-term investments that I will ever make, okay? So with that being said, I want to talk today about something called inflation. Inflation is when the value of a currency loses its value such that the price of all assets are more expensive simply because a currency had its value diminished. Okay, what does that mean? That means that if you're a very rich person and you invest in stocks like Apple, stocks like Tesla, stocks like Amazon, um, assets like real estate, gold, silver, and Bitcoin, you are simply going to have an increased return from inflation, okay? Simply because inflation is happening, you get an increased return on your investment. Why would gold or silver go up in value simply because the value of the dollar went down? Well, think about it. Does anything change about a brick of gold? A brick of silver? Is there any new thing we're going to discover about gold? I mean, ancient emperors have been trading gold for thousands of years, right? Nothing new we're going to discover about gold. So for all you fundamental traders out there, what happens when the price of gold goes up, right? Did it beat earnings? No. All right, why would gold go up? Gold goes up because the value of the dollar goes down. All right, today we're, we're going to talk about Bitcoin first, but think about that. Why would gold go up? It's just a brick of gold. It would only go up because the value of the dollar goes down. Okay, so if the value of the dollar is going down, who gets richer? People who own shares of Apple. People who own shares of Tesla. People who own shares of Microsoft. People who own shares of Alibaba. People who own shares of Amazon. People who own homes and real estate. People who own gold and silver. Why? Because nothing fundamentally about those, well, obviously companies have their fundamentals changed, but a large cap tech company, let's just say the NASDAQ or the S&P 500 that are continually rotating in the largest and most important companies in America, they're going to have their investment increase over time simply because the value of the dollar is going down. So what has happened in 2020? right? Bitcoin is breaking out of a massive base, right? So in Elliott Wave Theory, we would say this is wave one, right? Why is this wave one? Because it was the first wave, right? This was 2018. Everyone was telling me about Bitcoin. You know, hey, you heard of Bitcoin? Yep. And because I have, I know it's about to dump, right? Because once the average investor is talking about something, that's probably the end of the impulse wave, at least the, in, the end of wave one, right? Because after wave one, we have this big shakeout wave. It's a huge pain called wave two, right? Wave two is not fun. All right, a lot of y'all big tech investors are learning about wave two right now. Wave two is the ABC correction, okay? And this shakes out all the longs, right? So if you bought Bitcoin down here, you probably don't have Bitcoin anymore, right? You probably sold at some point around here, and that's exactly the point of wave two, right? And if you were a bear, you know, you saw Bitcoin dumping, you probably loaded short on all these pups. Oh, crap. Okay. So we have wave one, A, B, C. That completes wave two. Okay, so in Elliott Wave Theory, you go one, two, three, four, five. Or you go one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you go one, two, and then you go one, two again, that's something called a base. Okay, so this isn't only for wave theory. A classical trader would just call this a cup and handle or a base. Okay, so this is not, you know, I'm not, this is not tarot cards. I could say, just draw a trend line and say this is a classical base. Okay. Even without wave theory, large impulse, sideways, declining volume, 
large impulse, sideways, declining volume, volume breakout, okay? So let's just talk about the wave theory. We'll get into the pitchfork. We'll get into gold and silver. Wave one, A, B, C. Wave two. Wave one, A, B, C. Wave two. Okay, so this is called a nest. So a nest is a very powerful thing, right? You really want a nest. That's that's the best thing you can have in Elliott Wave Theory is an identified 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two completion. Okay? So after a nest, we're expecting long-term a move much higher than this previous all-time high. All right, and this is, I'm sorry. I know you guys love my time targets. This is a long-term video. Okay, this is like a, a long-term investment video. I'm not going to get, you know, oh, you know, if if silver's not at 32 by December, I'm wrong. That's This is a long-term investment video, all right? You want to, you know, day trade, <laughs> you know, inflation. Hey, have fun, all right? Enjoy that. You'll never retire, okay? But this run, this run takes about two, three years. We'll say at the absolute minimum, we're expecting Bitcoin to hit the all-time high a year from now. All right. I've documented Bitcoin. I called this a bull flag with a continuation target of 1400 And we've just hit the bottom of this pitchfork, okay? So let's just say I'm expecting Bitcoin. I'll get to the projection. I'm expecting Bitcoin to reach 22394 by the end of next year. Okay? I know that's more long-term than I usually do. This is Bitcoin. I mean, this is this is this is your future. This is my future, at least. You can do whatever you want with your money. Okay, I'm gonna invest my money in Bitcoin, gold, and silver, in large cap tech stocks, and inflation will go up and make me richer, or inflation will go down and make my dollars that I do have for spending worth more. Okay, my target for Bitcoin is twenty two thousand three hundred ninety four by the end of next year. Okay. I am actually waiting right now, so I could actually be someone who's missed the boat. But I'm actually waiting right now. I do believe I've identified long-term a beautiful pitchfork, and the median will be hit, right? So we could actually go a lot higher than 22,000. All right, 22,300 is a minimum target. I want to make that perfectly clear. 22,300 is a minimum target. I'm expecting the median of this pitchfork to be reached, okay? Long-term inflation is about to get extremely serious, in my opinion. Okay, we go on advance, ABC, declining volume confirms bullish consolidation. We form a beautiful pitchfork. Now we're testing this pitchfork, okay? What I'm looking for right here for me personally, any type of Bitcoin, anything close to 12,000, I'm buying, okay? I'm buying. Invalidation, stop loss level, like I said, I'm not trying to buy at this level. I do believe that we'll see at least some type of and we may not, we may not, but what I'm doing is waiting for a pullback to 12,000 and then buying long-term, okay? Long-term invalidation would be 10,146. So I'm looking to buy a pullback as close to 10,000 as possible with a stop below 2,100 and holding honestly for, for several several years, probably decades, but at the very minimum until we hit 22,394. Okay, now what I want to do, that's an investment I'm looking to buy a dip on. Okay, this, these are two that I'm in now. I would get in now personally and into new positions if there were dips personally. Remember, this isn't investment advice, okay? This is just for me, my trading journal. We go on a run right here. That's two months, okay? So two to three months from here, is my time target, right? So I'm predicting my time target for silver is by the end of January, I'm expecting this to happen, conservatively. I actually think this could happen in December. I'm saying conservatively for my time target, what I'm about to project will happen in January. Okay, this is a more shorter term trade. You know, Bitcoin was like a long-term buy the dip thing, okay? We'll get to long-term silver in a second. Two or three month run, ABC correction, Declining volume confirms bullish consolidation. Volume breakout gives us a timing signal. All right, this is my trading style. You can agree with it. You can disagree with it. I don't care. Okay. Beautiful reaction on the median. Beautiful reaction on the lower bound. 
declining volume confirming bullish consolidation. I'm along with the gold miners and the silver miners well into 2021 uh, leap calls, personally. I'll just disclose dis dis that right now. Invalidation level for silver, uh, 20.45. We'll just call it 20, but 20.45 for SLV is my uh, stop loss. Now, here's the thing. you Even if we broke below 20.45, it would just be boom, in my opinion, right? So we'll call 20.45 the stop loss, but that's not the invalidation level. Even if we went A, B, C, had a little more, we still have this declining volume, we still have this pitch for 20.45 would be the stop for you know, a, a position like that. And I'd be looking to get into silver longer term, just personally, if we did go down here, but I don't think we will. I think 20.45 holds us below. We start hitting back for the lower bound of this pitch fork, and then eventually we're gonna even go uh, to the equal legs target, and we're going to reach 32 by the end of January, okay? So I had previously said 32 um, by the end of December. I actually do still think that 32 could be hit by the end of December. I'm going to conservatively project, though, for my time target that silver will reach 32 by the end of January, okay? I'm expecting the meeting of this pitchfork to be reached, declining volume, bullish consolidation. We'll get into the 20-year chart of silver, <laughs> And this is like the long-term perspective, right? So I'll show you, this is a, we have a much better pitchfork for gold. And I'll show you that too. Here's a long-term pitchfork, right? So long-term, silver is honestly reaching the median of this pitchfork, in my opinion. Okay, it's not going to go there in a straight line. Silver is going to reach the median of this pitchfork long-term. You know, I think longer-term silver will definitely reach uh, the all-time high, or SLV of 48.35, in my opinion. Okay? Gold. All right, this is gold, declining volume, bulls consolidation, goes on a run, A, B, C correction, declining volume, bulls consolidation, sideways triangle, tight contraction, you know, theta, 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 option sellers, you know, making a killing on premium, calling option buyers, getting screwed. That's all about the change. Okay, we're about to break out of a tight range right here. I chart implied volatility. We can talk about that in other videos. We're about to go on a massive run. There's about to be a massive move in gold. I can I can tell you that without any of it out at all, that there will be a massive move in gold and silver. You know, the fact that I believe it's going to be to the upside is my personal technical analysis. But this is physics, that we will have a move, right? Because this consolidation is just not going to last, Right? The option market right now calls puts completely dead. No premium. And I know that because I chart implied volatility. We are at such a trough in implied volatility. You know, honestly, one strategy right now, and I'm definitely not saying anyone do this. Um, this is something that I, I do sometimes. When I chart implied volatility is extremely low. You could actually straddle this or strangle this with options, go call the inputs. That's a whole different thing. We'll get into that in other videos. But anyway, there will be a big move in silver. I'm projecting uh, in, in gold. I'm predicting it, pr projecting it's to the upside. Remember, this is GLD. Okay, so gold goes on this move here. This moves two or three months. Same time time target as silver. Beautiful reactions on this pitchfork. Very very valid pitchfork here. Extremely valid pitchfork on gold. GLD. I believe that we will hit <clears throat> two eleven by the end of January. Okay, so end of January. I believe gold will hit two eleven. The invalid, the stop loss level is 173. Okay, remember, like I said, for silver, it could be the same thing where even if 173 was broken, uh, we could go further and then, you know, still be A, B, C, you know, fake breakdown, back. We'll see. I'm projecting 173 holds us the low. We go to the lower bound of this pitchfork. Then we go to the median of this pitchfork. We reach 211 around uh, mid-January, uh, you know, late December, into January at the latest. Just my personal opinion. Okay, now real quick, I want to go long term on gold. Twenty years, beautiful pitchfork, extremely beautiful pitchfork. Uh, several great reactions on this lower bound for GLD. You know, I'd like you know more reactions on the median, ideally, but I do believe that we are heading for the median of this pitchfork. We had, I mean, this is a multi year, you know, very cut and dry pitchfork. You connect this low with this high with this high. And you really want to see reactions on this pitchfork. You want to see reactions on the median. And you want to see, really most importantly, reactions on this lower bound. Okay? Declining volume. Long-term bullish consolidation. Long-term base. Inflation is about to boom. Okay? Protect yourself. That's what I'm going to do.